And then we get the, of course, the war of uh, independence. We have Jordan occupying the West Bank. We have Egypt occupying Gaza, Syria occupying the Golan Heights. And of course, they were doing so contrary to international law. Again, the principle of inadmissibility of acquiring territory by force. People use that now against Israel for what it did in 67, but it applies equally to what Jordan did in 49. Jordan took the West Bank by force. Egypt took Gaza by force. They attacked Israel, not the other way around. Israel is admitted as a member of the United Nations in 1949. 1949 is also the year that the Geneva Conventions are instituted, the international humanitarian law protecting civilians in times of war. We'll come back to that. And then we have the creation of Europe from the late 40s into the 1950s, 1957, the Treaty of Rome, creating the European economic communities. Then we have the Six Day War, 1967, this is the turning point really in a way that laid the foundation I think for Yom Kippur and what happened uh, in October, November 1973. Of course Israel preemptively struck out into Egypt and won the Six Day War because they realized that war was going to come. And I think this changed the perception of Israel in a dramatic way, certainly did in Europe. All of a sudden, Israel and the Jewish people were no longer David fighting against Goliath, but they had become Goliath fighting against David. It was suddenly perceived that Israel had the power, the force, the capacity out of its own initiative to overcome the Arab nations. But again, the international community accepted, with the exception perhaps of Russia and France, that Israel was acting defensively and that it was Egypt with Syria and Jordan who had created the reasons for the conflict. The Six Day War was followed by the Khartoum Declaration on the part of the Arabs, the three no's. No peace, no recognition, no negotiation with Israel. Again, to pick up on Kelvin's point, the Arabs are rejecting time and again the existence of a Jewish state. It's not about borders, it's not about land, it's about the existence of a Jewish state. And we come to Resolution 242. Now I want to dwell just for two minutes on 242. It's important because 242 recognizes that Israel had legitimate interests and rights in the West Bank. 242 says quite explicitly that Israel must withdraw its military forces from territories that it has gained. And there was a negotiation going on, particularly between Russia on the one hand, United States and Britain on the other, about the extent to which Israel would be required to withdraw. And the conclusion was that there would be an obligation on Israel to withdraw from territories. It was not obliged to withdraw all its forces from all of the territories occupied in 1967. So the 1949 armistice lines were never recognized as borders. They were definitely not recognized in Resolution 242 as being binding borders. 